Hi and welcome to this online training video for Automation Studio. In this video, we'll be creating a sequential function chart to control this electrohydraulic circuit. To do so, we'll first need to open an SFC document. And in order to have a good view, I have split the view with vertical tiles. We won't need the library explorer so I can close it and we're good to go. So to create an SFC or a sequential function chart we'll go in the home ribbon and we'll be using the alternate step and transition. This function will allow you to from a signal click create a step and then a transition and you notice I just click and my cursor moves down along so I just have to click and all my structure will be connected together. I'll be using that SFC to control my cylinder to extend and retract over and over again. So in order to close the loop I have to close the loop here and you see now shortcuts have been created. This shortcut means 2x1 x being the symbol for a step and 1 being its number. So I'm going to step number 1 and here that shortcut means from y2 y being the transition. In each step and transition you can add a note or a comment in order to help you um, create the structure while programming. So on the first step here I will want to extend my cylinder I'll write down extend the cylinder. My first transition, I will want to check if I reach A1, so I'll check for A1. My second step, I will want to retract the cylinder. And finally, in my final transition, I will want to check if I reached A0. Now that my steps are clear in my head of for what I want to do, I can start the programming. The way it will work, I will have to create a Boolean variable associate this, this solenoid to the variable I just created and control that variable with my SFC. To do so, I go in Tool and open the Variable Manager. And here I can create a new variable. So the first is to choose what type of variable I want to create. In this case, it will be a bowling. And for, as for the localization, when you want to create a variable to be controlled by an SFC, it's highly recommended to create it in the SFC chart. So I will name my first variable extend. And I will do so as well for one called retract. Now that my variables are created, I can go into my hydraulic schematic and associate the variable with my solenoids. So first select the solenoid, go into variable assignment. I can filter with extend, double click, create a link. Then select my second solenoid, filter for retract, and create my second assignment. Well, I have to program my SFC in order to control those variables. To do so in my first step, I can either type in directly the action, but if you want to make sure that the syntax is good, you can browse through your variables. And here I can filter, I want to extend. And here you see this one belongs to the solenoid and this one belongs to the SFC. So that's the variable I want to control. So double-clicking into it will insert it into the action. 
You have to know that in Automation Studio, if you input only the variable name, in this case, .stfc1.extend, that means to turn it to true. If you want to have a look at these different syntax and operators, you can expand it here. And the difference in between this equal one and this column equal one. Column equal one means that you set the variable to true until you set it otherwise. So it's permanent assignation, while the equal one only lasts for the duration of the step. Same for the transition. Here, I want to check for A1. So I'll filter A1. And in the transition, only inputting a Boolean variable will be the same as go through the transition when this variable turns to true. I'll make some extra space here. All right, so step two, I want to retract the cylinder. So I will filter for retract. And here again, the variable I want to control is the one located in the SFC, so double click. And finally, extra room as well. I want to check for A0, so I will filter A0. Now the final thing I have to do before starting my circuit is to set a step as an initial step. So I will right click on my first step and click convert normal step to initial. You'll see there's a double box here which indicate which step is the initial one. So I will now be able to start my simulation and at all time you see the active step is being highlighted with a red square. And the boolean variable, when they come true, they become highlighted with a black background. And when they turn false, it's a white background. Now you see that this SFC is controlling my circuit on the right. Now if I want to add a timer, say for the cylinder to stay extended for 2 or 3 seconds, I can do so. So in my conditions here, I will insert in syntax for a timer. The T slash is for the timer. And here, let me explain to you the syntax of it. T slash is the timer. And the between here has to be a Boolean variable that as soon as the output of that variable turns true, the timer will start. And the timer here, I'll have to replace the A by the number of seconds, minutes, hours, or days, according to what symbol I will input by on the side of it. So here, my Boolean variable, I want to I want to have as a trigger for my timer is A1 turning true. So I will take this condition, the one I had earlier, I'll cut it, and I will paste it at the place of the Boolean variable. And I will want the timer to stay extended for say 3 seconds, so I'll input 3 seconds. If you wanted minutes, just replace the S by an M or an H or a D for hours and days. And now, once I validate, I can go back to simulation, and now you see as my cylinder reaches A1, the timer starts, count to 3 seconds, and retract. Thanks for watching this online training video for Automation Studio. We invite you to watch the other videos, and we'd like to thank you for your time.